Hey everyone, uh, this is Waddle Malley. I want to talk about Sizer 6.0 and why it's such a game changer uh, for SEs, be it partner SEs or Nutanix SEs. Um, there's really three key features here that are just going to really change things. One is we introduced this notion of cluster libraries that you can direct the auto sizing. And the net result is you're going to get the hardware sizing you want in a whole lot less time. What it is is reusable cluster libraries and it does direct the auto sizing the way you want to. And then, like, like I said, the result is less time, uh, more consistency. So if you just keep reusing the same cluster library, maybe it's a database library, for example. Um, and so every database sizing is consistent. And then just less knowledge. We're up to 18 different vendors and knowing all the CPUs and disk drives, et cetera, would be very, very hard. Second, uh, we're delivering hybrid cloud solutions now and size are all in the same scenario. So it used to be you would have to do multiple scenarios and just kind of cut and paste, so to speak. Uh, now it's all in one scenario. It could be NX and DX and AWS, all sorts of things. Got 17 vendors. And then you can size and compare all those. So looking then at the, um, yeah, why the, the cluster setting libraries. So all the front end, so to speak, the customer workloads is still the same. So you're going to still have those interactive sessions with the customer, get those those rich requirements, whether it's database or VDI, what have you. Um, now, though, there's a whole in, in between here is a cluster settings, and you can pull in a certain library. So maybe it's an NX database or HX files cluster library and in there the vendor, the speed of the process or the type of store storage, the models, the size or policy like thresholds and what kind of networking, all sorts of things then in this library can be defined and then it be reused. So you're telling the auto engine what you want and then um, you'll get what you want and it's out the door and out demo. And then, yes, you can have multiple clusters has been around for quite a while in Sizer, but now it's solutions in the sense of each can be a different vendor and each, again, can be a different cluster library. Um, so maybe you, uh, and a, a DX here is all flash, here's a cloud, AWS, and then Annex. Okay, why don't we just go right to Sizer then? Okay, so I already started a, a, a scenario. Let me go ahead and add a workload. Let's start with BDI. That works. Uh, one. I'm going through this fast just because I want, really want to show you the cluster sizing, not, not BDI. <laughs> so at any rate, um, so let's just go to 100 task workers. That's all good. Obviously, in a real environment, you would talk to the customer and go through a lot of these requirements in detail. But we're just going to go with that. So 100 task workers. And what will happen then is you'll pop up right here is the um, cluster settings. And, um, you know, it, it starts out as default, it's just sort of wide open, meaning allows all sorts of options, be it models, and it's the slow, you know, the minimum speed would be the lowest. So it allows all options, basically, for that given vendor. And when you do that, I mean, you can certainly do that. A matter of, it's like today's auto. And, you know, about 25% of the time people go with that. Um, you can then, yeah, just go to solution here. And um, as mentioned, 25% of the time people do use that. It's a fine solution. Uh, it does work. There's nothing wrong with it, per se. Uh, but, you know, different people just don't want uh, want more discerning things. Maybe they want four nodes. Uh, maybe they don't want a single processor, even though this is a low end and it worked just fine. Uh, they just don't want a sing uh, single point of failure there. So, hence, what's happening today, 75% of the time, is edits. And sure enough, you could do manual if you wanted to, but why? Because in 6.0, because this is really time consuming, because here, just so people understand, you're going into the models, maybe change the models, everything else. So that's a lot of work. Um, so actually, though, with 6.0, you got libraries. So better yet is use a cluster template library. So I already defined one for BDI. And I'll show it here. So all I did is hit that, I said apply. Now I got this new library. It says it's been applied successfully. It's got certain, it's just been tuned for VDI. It's got certain models that are really best for VDI. It's got a better, you know, two and a half gigahertz, kind of mid, mid range there. That's usually what you want. 
uh, all flash is typically what you want. Uh, there's this whole notion of, you know, um, policy. So here, a, you know, four nodes instead of three as a minimum, a two SSDs, two minimum uh, sockets per node, you know, just uh, 25 gig, you know, things that, you know, the SE would want. Um, and then I'll go ahead and apply that. And I might add is, is on this is there's your own, but uh, we haven't filled them out yet, but there's also expert libraries. This is our, our stage environment. But anyway, so I've applied again the Walt BDI library. All I do is apply it then. And let's see, so we should get a new solution here. We sure do. Okay, so um, yeah, so it's a 3060 G8. So it's definitely two, two sockets. Four nodes as we want. It does have, you know, it is all flash as we want and things like that. So, so you know, a, a more preferred solution often is, is what it amounts to. And so it just, you avoided all those edits that would have to be done uh, for the big name. Okay, let me go ahead then and, and also demo then the notion of a multi-cloud uh, or hybrid cloud. So I'm going to add a, a, another workload. We're going to put it in a different cluster. Let's say, you know, that's 100 uh, BDI task workers, but they have a bunch of files, documents that they need to access. And um, yeah, I've got to show my users, that's fine. Let's say it's about 200 terabytes. That's fine too. And um, yeah, let's just go ahead and save it. Whoops, yeah, it is a standalone cluster. So I didn't need to put that in um, because it was the dedicated files. Okay, so any rate, we're going to go back to this. And here's what I'm going to show you is how it, um, you're going to use these cluster templates. So you're going to, over time, have a bunch of templates. So you, I want to put this on, on the cloud. So I'm putting on this AWS. Boom, I apply it. Notice it's at AWS. It's all their models, all the settings that I would want um, in the, that whole thing. I won't go through them. And I just apply it. I already know the library is what I want, so I don't need to go through it. And um, once again here, I'll just go to Solutions. By golly, here we are. We have a hybrid cloud uh, solution here. Here is uh, on-prem is, is NX. It could be HX. It could be DX. It could be anybody. Just use a different library. Um, and then uh, the files is on AWS. So. So that's that. And then I want to show is, well, what about quoting and uh, comparing the price and things like that? So, so we're going to get budgetary quote. Now it's tied right to front line. So, you know, it's down to the penny. But of course, we advertise it as a budgetary quote. Because really what you're trying to do, you can apply discounts that you think the customer is going to get. You're trying to do is see, hey, does this fit uh, the customer budget without creating an actual quote? But you see the, the cluster one, that's the on-prem solution. Here's the files that's on AWS. Okay, so um, let's just go ahead and create the real deal here, the frontline quote. And so, okay, so just like Sizers does. Now you could uh, change the licensing, but that's the default, that's the most common. And sure enough, we'll go ahead and create this one. Okay, there's the delay there, but it takes a while. Fine wine. Okay, so here we go. So here is something really, really special that if you're a sales rep or SE, have done uh, um, multi-cluster quoting, you're gonna love this for sure. And it, okay, there we go. This is a multi-cluster quote. Today, a sales rep or SE, they actually have to do is create multiple opportunities and then each cluster goes into its own quote and, of those opportunities. Here, one quote within one opportunity, you have the multi-cluster. But it, then it's a, I won't go through it, but the normal front line, you apply discounts and you submit it for approval. But at any rate, I um, want to thank everybody for, the, for their time. Thank you.